seriously? I'm on this. Sorry about that. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, I'm gonna refresh this. I know, right? God, that's annoying. You want to tether through my phone? Jesus, it might be better. Okay, so the internet's out for a second, I guess. It's coming back. Give it a moment. Lo loading. Did somebody just take down the network? Come on, guys. Second talk of the day. Couldn't wait. Do we have hardware in here that I can plug into? Drugstore? Yeah. They have cameras in there. So? Excuse me. What's up? What are we doing here? Oh, I'm taking a video. I'd appreciate it if you'd go somewhere else with that, okay? Oh, it's fine. It's just a video. It's offensive to me. Excuse me, I'm trying to have a private conversation. Could you respect that? And she just didn't get it. It's just a video, man. I hear you. Okay. I'm having a private conversation. Would you please move? It's just a video. I, do you not understand what I'm saying? It's a private conversation. All right, calm down. Leave. Calm down. Leave. It's just a video. Fuck you. You got it? And the horse you rode in on. Jesus Christ, you have no respect for anybody. What are you going to do? What's that other network called? Okay. Thank you. Do you follow me around now? Hello. Yeah. I'm white. Huh? I'm white. Why do you say that? I'm not an African driver. Yeah, sir. Sorry. You need to, you need to go. Sir. She requested you to take pictures of something, an arrest that's going on. You need to go. Somebody help! Call me!
What a dumb fuck. surveillance cameraman he has about seven videos on YouTube and they're all sort of like this uh, style of just like shoving a camera in somebody's face and being like I'm just, I'm, I'm just taking a video I'm just, I'm just taking a video that's it you know and like people react really violently and it's it's quite hilarious um, so I mean this is sort of starts to talk and 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 about what we're kind of talking about and what this looks like so the first thing um, do people know Jeremy Bentham He's a interesting dude from like the 1700s, came up with lots of, wrote philosophy. He came up with this concept of um, the panopticon, which is this prison design. So it's a huge circle, as you can see here in this um, illustration. Um, it's, a, it's a building where all of the prisoners are kept on the um, outside walls. And there's a window um, in each cell. And then there is a um, guard in the middle who can at a moment's glance see every single prisoner in the um in their cells because the the light coming in through the window and he he um he designed this um as sort of a perfect prison to uh, keep uh, prisoners in line um his quote is uh I, f I flatter myself that there can now be little doubt of the plants possessing the fundamental advantages i have been attributing to it i mean the apparent omnipresence of the inspector if divine will allow me the expression, combined with the extreme facility of his real presence. So this prison plan was, um, it made it so that the guard didn't actually have to be watching you for you to be, or the prisoner to be um, uh, subservient. Um, and this, this idea, it was never really implemented in, in any way in his lifetime, but this idea of the panopticon is really useful when talking about surveillance because it's this idea that um, these technologies and these um, apparatuses can come together to enforce um, a security or subservience that doesn't have to actually exist. Um, here's a picture of him. He's in a box um, and, and preserved, the Jeremy Bentham is. <laughs> um, he has a wax head now. It was supposed to be his real head. Um, you should read up about him. He's, he's kind of cool and kooky. Um, so, Drawing on uh, the Panopticon, um, Michel Foucault, anybody? Okay, cool. Somebody reads too much of philosophy. No. Um, great philosopher. He, he used the um, Panopticon to sort of uh, as a metaphor for panopticism. Um, and this is from his book, uh, Discipline and Punish, which if you haven't read it, you should. It's awesome. Um, and he says that the Panopticon design was not unique that it was a shift of consciousness from spectacle, which is uh, the public life, to uh, the focus on the individual and private life. Um, to quote, he who is subjected to a field of visibility and who knows it assumes responsibility for the constraints of power. He makes them play spontaneously upon himself. He inscribes in himself the power relation in which he simultaneously plays both roles. He becomes the principle of his own subjugation. So, in our society, or in, in societies, there's pretty much two ways that you can control a populace. This is, you know, what we all know and love, is when cops punch you in the face. Um, and this is, you know, very violent, very, very showy, you know, you murder everybody at the protest and nobody's protesting. And then nobody does protest. Um, this has a lot of complications. People usually don't like it. Um, people are very angry when you kill all their friends. Um, and so there's this other way, though, that you can um, control bodies in, in this way, and it's through this uh, watching of everybody and this um, the panopticism technique where the people are watched and they know they're, wa they're being watched, but they don't actually have to be watched to be in control. So the fact that we have cameras everywhere makes us not shoplift. Whether or not we know people are watching those cameras because the 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 whole system works in this in this way to keep us in check so to speak um, the exercise of power is made much less explicit in this case and it's more that you yourself are subjugating your body as opposed to you getting physically restrained from doing a thing um, with that now we get on to the art valence which is this uh, broad category 
that I've sort of split up into three um, subcategories of, uh, we have surveillance, artists who engage with uh, surveillance technologies explicitly. So this would be artists who use security camera footage or, um, or use security cameras as, as an aesthetic. Um, um, surveillance, which is the, um, the inverse of that. So you have the, those who are being watched doing the watching. So do people know cop watch? This uh, phenomenon in the United States and abroad. That's where people go out with cameras and film the police as they're doing, like doing traffic stops and whatnot, and the cops usually get frustrated and walk away. And um, That's a, a really good example of surveillance. Um, and then I have this other category, anti-surveillance, which is um, sort of what I'm c categorizing as um, um, explicit attacks or um, opposition to the surveillance apparatus as it exists. Um, the term art valence uh, defines surveillance and the surveillance tools as the paintbrush and the medium. And so everything sort of um, boils down from that. And that um, you, can, you can start to peel back what, which uh, artists are using these tools and, and in these three categories that I've sort of put them into. Yeah. Um, so this is our surveillance category. Um, everybody knows Bangsky. Uh, he loves surveillance, you know, aesthetics. He uses a lot of cameras. He's very critical of um, CCTV in the UK, which is pretty much his, his influence. Um, this was a um, piece at uh, LACMA, which is the um, LA Contemporary Museum um, in LA. Um, and this is called Security Birds. I'll just play the video for you. Yeah. that's you know very cute <laughs> you have your little birdies um, and then uh, in that same piece he has this bird that's just like in a styrofoam container um, um, and this is a this is a really good piece as well um, it's a stencil in front of a security camera going what are you looking at um, sort of asking the question to the to the camera itself and turning that into the the subject of the art which is um, pretty cool um, the there was another piece he did that was um, a security camera mobile over a, a crib that I that I really like. Um, these are all examples of the of this aesthetic. Um, to go into more engaging with um, security cameras uh, explicitly, uh, we're going to go on to the Institute for Applied Autonomy, um, which they operated in New York. Do does people know them? They um, did a project called IC, um, and I'll play the video and then talk about it a bit. Since 1998, the Institute for Applied Autonomy has developed technologies that enable average citizens, political protesters, and the functionally paranoid to defend their way of life. Closed circuit television, or CCTV surveillance of public space is on the rise, using cameras installed on buildings, ATM machines, and traffic lights, police officers and private security guards monitor our every move. A 1998 survey documented over 2,400 cameras in New York City's public places. Since then, the number has continued to skyrocket with more cameras on the way. It has become virtually impossible to avoid CCTV's prying eyes. Until now, using advanced artificial intelligence technology, the Institute for Applied Autonomy has developed IC, an inverse surveillance system that helps people track and avoid CCTV cameras. Visitors to the IC website are presented with a map of New York City highlighting surveillance camera locations. Predictably enough, the majority are in areas of great financial value, such as Midtown, 
and the financial district, even though street crime is more prevalent in low-income neighborhoods. Users click the map to indicate a current location and a desired destination. An IC's route planning algorithm provides a path of least surveillance, avoiding as many cameras as possible. This map may be printed out for later use. Since its launching in October of 2001, IC has produced well over one million unique maps and has been extended to Manhattan, Amsterdam, and Ljubljana. In addition, IC has provoked public debate over CCTV use in such publications as Wired Magazine and the London Financial Times, and on websites including Slashdot and Fox News. IC is also featured on Yahoo's Travel and Transportation Guide to New York City. In August of 2002, the IAA released an updated IC client optimized for mobile and wireless devices. This version allows IC to also function as a data collection tool, enabling groups of users to quickly and easily create and share maps of their city's surveillance infrastructure. IC. Now more than ever. This uh, project uh, was um, really surrounded around the idea that you could make paths of uh, least surveillance, as I said in the video, and um, it, you know, you could actually get from point A to point B without being on camera, um, which was really hard in New York, and it's probably even harder now. Hard in, in London, where we have like the biggest concentration of, of CCTV cameras. Um, and this project uh, um, influences a lot of contemporary projects. I know that there's a um, security camera tracking project in Oakland right now that's trying to do the same thing. Is like, where do these cameras exist? Because you don't always see them. And so going out into the field and being able to mark these cameras um, is particularly useful. Um, so you can travel freely without being on film all the time. And sometimes you want to be on film, though, because you want to make a statement about these cameras. And that's where I'm going to go to another New York group called the Surveillance Camera Players, um, who are they did. Um, this is their rendition of uh, a, a, a rendition of 1984 that they did, um, utilizing the um, subway system surveillance cameras. Yeah, I think you need a... What do they actually do? A permit to do this? No, you don't. You don't? It's public space. 
What? What's that? You understand? Where is this? Down in the ramp? Yeah, down See what's going on down the road? Oh, yeah. Can you tell them the cops are coming? Yeah, well, they went the wrong Everybody way. Everybody scatter, please. No one loitering. Goes over. Everybody out. Goes over. Everybody stop. Out, out, out. Don't visit the station. Out. Wait, wait, wait. We ain't got no commitment to do that. Thank you. Look at that, we're in the middle of a movie? Yeah. Oh, okay. These are surveillance camera players. Oh. So why are you saying like something's going on? They could have been real, clunk. That's a joke. So why are you guys doing this? Um, to show that there's surveillance cameras everywhere you turn. Yeah, but who doesn't know that? <laughs> it's like a joke. It is a joke. Yeah, well, everybody knows. I know. That's why they're. Yeah. Oh, I hate to be like stupid to doing it. End of story. Wait. So the surveillance camera players did um, a lot of the, this work. They have a, a bunch of uh, their stuff online um, in video form. I invite you to check them out and explore them. Um, yeah, they're, they did a lot of plays and they've done a lot of work against um, surveillance cameras and surveillance. Um, the next artist I'm talking about is um, and, uh, Ambient Information Systems. And this is probably one of my favorite pieces um, conceptually in this, in this talk because um, so this is uh, Mukul Patel and Manu Lakush uh, compiled a document called the Manu Festo for CCTV Filmmakers. Uh, the duo made it clear that their films are going to use exclusively the footage from CCTV cameras. Um, so I didn't know this before doing this research. In the UK, you can actually get a court order to obtain surveillance footage of which you are a um, subject and you get the footage back and it looks like this. Uh, everybody else's face is blocked out um, but yours. And so you can say you, if you're going through the train or you're going by a store and, and through this, you can actually get this footage and, and, and obtain it. And so um, these two artists used this footage and um, they made a dystopian sci-fi film completely using this footage. And so they, they had to film by using the security cameras all the footage of the film and then obtain it through court orders and then edit it together. Um, here's the, the trailer of that um, online. Um, we can watch that real quick. Um, it's uh, narrated by uh, Tilda Swinton, too. see this. The gated dream in which the past telescopes into the future. She has no understanding of these images that revisit her, that take her out of real time out of her role in the new machine. Only later will she recognize them as nostalgia and resentment.
So the, the whole concept of this film is that there is a, a individual who lives in a faceless world and she wakes up one day with a face and has to find somebody else with a face and so that's the whole premise of it. And they, you, can, you can find the whole film online. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Um, so moving out of the surveillance um, section of this, uh, we're going to talk about surveillance and uh, this is the idea that um, those who um, are doing the watching can be watched themselves and, um, and what this looks like. Um, first we're going to talk about Steve Mann, Stephen Mann. People know him, right? Yep, he's pretty famous. Um, you know, he does his his uh, primary project that he's most famous for is the ITAP. Um, but this project is um, uh, is a lot of fun. I'll just show you the video. It's called Shooting Back. Yeah, I was just wondering, what are those those uh, dark uh, things up on the ceiling? Oh, those? That's just the AC system. Just the what? AC system. Oh yeah, like those dark hemispheres up up, up on the ceiling. Yeah. Is what's a, What do you mean by AC? They're just the temperature. Oh, they're what? Like temperature sensors? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. For air conditioning or heating? Both. People don't know they're being filmed. This is hidden camera right now. Yeah, I was just wondering um, what the dark uh, thing up on the ceiling is what there. That is? I don't know. I have no idea. Hmm. Is it some kind of camera, maybe? It could be. I don't know, sir. I just answered your question. I do not know. Not sure what it is. Is I'm there somebody? Sure what it is. is there somebody who might know what it is? Uh, security people. If you want to go down here as far as you can go, you can talk to the security people. Oh yeah. So it has something to do with security. I don't know, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to put words in my mouth. They said we don't want to spend over two thousand, twenty-two to two thousand to twenty-two hundred. Yes. Yeah. I was just wondering what that that. Uh, dark thing up on the ceiling is there. Those are cameras from security watching people. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. Would, would, don't you find they make customers feel uncomfortable though? No. Well actually they probably make most people feel comfortable because they know. feel safe. Yeah. Why is that? Because they're watching over you. If somebody's next to you with a gun or stealing, they'll know it. They'll come out and protect you. Yeah, but there might be some people who are camera shy or... or they're all Unfortunately, over the, place. The, the world that we live in today, we can't trust everybody. By them having security and stopping crime and criminals and stealing, keeps the prices down. Yeah, so it's it's a matter of difficult to trust people, I guess. In yeah, this. it's the world we live in. It's just it's unfortunate, but you know. yeah, yeah, it says like the story you can trust, um, but yet it's sort of isn't it ironic that there isn't sort of mutual trust? Not how the world is. Like, Especially when you have presidents and first ladies making crime. Yeah. Then, you know. I guess anyone can be a criminal. Don't let the balls bother you. They're not. But you don't think that cameras might make people feel uncomfortable? No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> so he goes into stores and just like asks about the security cameras, and people are like, uh, oh, maybe I'll tell you. And then pulls out this, like, you know, as you can see, it's like a huge VHS camera, like, like here, I'm filming you now. It's great. Um, so Steve Mann has, of course, uh, the ITAP project, um, which has, uh, has been his longest running uh, uh, art project. Um, you know, people say it's in influences Google, Google Glass. I beg to differ. Um, I would say that, that Steve Mann is sort of, it's the anti-Google Glass. Like, he's... he's um, Taking taking this idea of of of, of survey, or being surveilled all the time and and turning that back and he's been wearing this device since the 70s and there's you know of course absurd iterations of it with a huge television um, antenna on it and it's actually like 
Did the contemporary models look like, oh, I could actually like look at you and s instead of being freaked out by you. But um, uh, this uh, device actually um, caused a bit of controversy in a, in a Paris uh, McDonald's. Um, he was assaulted uh, while wearing the device by um, some workers there because they didn't want him to film the menu. Um, and so they like grabbed at him and it's like, it's like bolted to his head. Like you can't just like take it off. So it's like they're, they're assaulting him. And through this experience, he came up with this uh, term, uh, McValence. Um, and it's the, the, um, the amount of surveillance divided by the amount of surveillance. So the amount of surveillance, which is us being watched, divided by the amount of um, uh, su uh, surveillance, which is us watching the watchers. Um, and he said that the more McValence there is, that's the, the more corrupt of the, of the society that we'll be in. Um, and then he came up with this uh, cool graphic of like, you know, how all of the, the, the directionality of surveillance versus surveillance and anti-surveillance and anti-McValence. It's like, there's a lot of valence. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and so I, I, this, this idea that, that, you know, we are allowed to be filmed, but if I go into um, an establishment, I cannot film it. And that's sort of like the unwritten contract that we all agree to when we walk through the door because we want to buy a burger or we want to buy a shirt. Um, um, the next artist I'm talking about is uh, Hassan uh, Alaya. And um, he was stopped in 2002 um, at the airport by FBI agents and uh, being accused of being a terrorist. And he was interrogated for hours. Um, and this experience really was awful, of course. Um, and as a result, he started doing this project where he uh, tracked himself through uh, GPS and, um, and maps. And let me just pull up his website. The website's still live, uh, and he's still tracking himself to this day since 2002. Um, now when he travels, he will contact FBI offices and tell them he's in town. Um, you know, at any time, you can go to this website, and it's not loading. But, um, and it'll tell you his GPS location and some photos that he took of that, that location. So at any time, you know where he is. Um, and since then, he hasn't been stopped by the FBI at all. So maybe this is all what we should be doing. Um, and the, you know, this, was a, this was a response to harassment. And it, you know, it, it works in this, in this funny way. But yeah. Um, So now we're going to talk about anti-surveillance, which I sort of um, made this category as like, this is sort of the, the direct opposition to these surveillance um, tools that are around us, as opposed to sort of just using cameras and, and watching the watchers. But like, how can we subvert or counteract these, um, the security apparatus? Um, um, do people know registered trademark, RT mark? Um, they're, they, um, do you remember the um, G.I. Joe and Barbie doll talking Barbie doll switch where people took, yeah, that's them. Um, they've been around for a really long time doing um, really fun artwork and they released a guide to closed circuit television dis um, camera destruction. Um, and they, you know, in their, in their piece they explain, well, why? And they're like, well, trust your instincts. Um, and then they give a little bit more of a, um, a longer response of, um, the gaze of the camera does not fall equally on all users of the street, but on those who are stereotypically predefined as potential deviant or through appearance and demeanor, are singled out by operation, operators as unrespectable. In this way, youth, particularly those already socially and economically marginalized, may be subject to even greater levels of authoritative intervention and official stigmatization. And rather than contributing to social justice through the reduction of victimization, CCTV will merely become a tool of injustice through the amplification of differential and discriminatory policing. So this guide is really nuts and bolts. It goes through you know, how to take down security cameras. And it's like, well, throw a rope around it and, and pull it down or shoot paint at it. And like, it emphasizes uh, you know, getting a group of friends together to go attack security cameras and like, you know, making sure that you're fit, like practicing climbing fences and running away and um, going out in the middle of the night dressed in black. And it, you know, it's a it's very basic, ba basic guide. Uh, in this same light, um, there's a group uh, cam over in uh, 2013. They, um, they, there was a police congress happening in Berlin, Germany. Um, and they wanted to create a response to this um, 
huge police conference um, by making it a game to be like, okay, all over the world, we're going to have this game now where you collect as many security cameras as you can then post it on this uh, like game posting site that's like for like they had alongside like soccer games that you like posted up like, oh, I got this many goals. It's like, oh, I got this many, like I got 20 cameras in, in one night. So um, this is their uh, sort of promo video they released. Oh, jeez. Series. Oh. Is that internet? Yeah, we're out of internet. We ran out. The legacy one's up. Will that work? Let me try. Oh, that's great. She doesn't really like surve being surveilled on, right? Das sind aber Dinge, über die nicht It's a thing. Die muss man einfach machen. What? Talk while we wait. Okay, so, yeah, um, cam over. They uh, they um, had th they had this uh, initial video uh, that we're gonna watch in a second, and then um, a few other groups uh, were s were spotted at like in Tacoma, Washington. A group got together and did like 30 cameras in one night, and um, it was you know it was a fun little thing leading up to the uh, Berlin um, Police Congress, um, and yeah. Let's see if it'll play now. Mm. Um. Okay, so you get the point. <laughs> People don't like security cameras and they made a video of them uh, breaking them. Um. But, um, so, I mean, going along with that, um, you know, there's straight up destruction of security cameras. That's a really effective way to get rid of security cameras. I mean, it's pretty clear, like, you're getting rid of them. Um, uh, there's also this other category in here it's called disruptive fashion, which is uh, really interesting. Um, Adam Harvey is one artist who um, is exploring this arena of, like, um, making it so the things we already do and dress like weirdos um, blocks security cameras, I guess. No. Um, you know, he created um, a makeup and hair patterns that would actually confuse uh, facial recognition cameras. And so um, in this uh, example, no faces are detected in this, uh, for this person because of the, the hair shape and the, the high contrast uh, makeup. Um, and here's an example of just using the hair, of course, of faces detected. Um, and here's a, a close-up of that. And then you have the you know, cyberpunk version of like, yeah, this is what my friends look like. 
Um, you know, but like these are effective ways to subvert security cameras uh, that are that use facial recognition software, and we know from things being leaked and, and, and technologies being invented, like this is real technology. And like, if there were ways to incorporate it into our everyday dress, like we could walk through walk through space not being um, tracked. Um, Another group who kind of is in this uh, same light is uh, URA PhiloArt. Um, and they did a project where they um, made a high-powered LED uh, ring that you would attach to your head. Um, that would be infrared LEDs, which infrared LEDs are seen by cameras, but not by people. And so you could walk around, and then your head would just be this big light um, staring at the cameras. Um, and this is the device itself. It's a pretty simple design. Um, admittedly, I did do a lot of research on this, and other artists have tried to recreate this, and they're like, uh, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But um, I think that this concept is really, really cool. And like, um, Becky Stern is doing a uh, talk tomorrow at 3 about uh, disruptive fashion. Um, and I'm pretty sure she's going to be talking about uh, stuff like this. So that's really something you like and want to see. Go to that talk um, tomorrow. I don't remember the room, but um, I'll look it up. Um, and so, yeah, um, that's pretty much my talk. Um, you know, I've gone over a lot of artists, and overall, I the reason I'm doing this talk is that like we get a lot of information about like what sucks and what is terrible, and 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 sort of in this way. And like, I I like this art, and I want to see more of it. And if like you know of artists who are working in this medium, please contact me. Um, I've done a bit of work in, the, in, in this as well. Like, it's interesting. It's, it's engaging with the, the world we live in. And it's a little less depressing than reading the news. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's my Twitter and GitHub. I r write code. I tweet a lot about silly things. Uh, this is the resources link. That goes to a GitHub account that's going to be, um, I have a full bibliography of the research I did. Um, so you can go and check out. Um, and dive more into this. I have a few artists that I wasn't, weren't able to fit into the presentation um, who didn't exactly fit in any category. I just didn't have the time. Um, that's going to go up there. And I'm going to be updating it um, as I go. So if, I, if you send me artists through Twitter, I will put them up there later today. Um, do people have questions? Yeah. Uh, so I have right now, I have, um, there was this artist who did a security camera defeated by a balloon. Maybe I'll just pull this up real quick since I do have like five more minutes. Yeah, here we go. So we have, um, so Zach Blass um, is somebody who's doing, he just had an uh, interview in Vice Magazine um, and he, um, is an artist who's working both in uh, the queer space and in the surveillance space, and he created these masks that um, hide your face. Um, and um, this whole interview I linked to, and it's it's quite good. Um, that's a that's one of the artists I, I was able to find. Um, this picture and this um, there there's an artist who did a bunch of these like little sort of like adjustments of the urban environment, and this was one which is like a balloon and a rock. And that's like, you know, good anti-surveillance. Um, yeah, and then uh, this encrypted mixtape for the NSA. Have people heard about this? OK, I'll click on it anyway. So an engineer made a, a, a encrypted mixtape for the NSA because they're like, well, you can read all my emails, but I really want you to listen to my music. Like, <laughs> So maybe they'll crack it, and they'll be able to listen to you know, the Smiths. Um, yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? What? Who cut my hair? What? Ah, they're trolling me. Is it, I got friends in the audience. Yeah, what's up? I haven't um, seen any art that is explicitly doing, yeah, like gate tracking is actually more effective than face tracking. I know that. Um, I'd like to see work in that arena. Um, if you know of people, like forward them along, or maybe we could start it. <laughs> yeah, if you're looking for art to do, hobbling or you know, making your shoes different weights to, to 
Segways. Ah, oh, damn. Segways. Yeah. Any more questions? Oh, in the back. Sorry, I can't see very well, so yell at me. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, for sure. I mean, I, I think it's like, yeah, like, haha, you have a job and you work with cameras and you're an idiot. Like, it's, it, that's sort of like the Steve Mann um, video sort of has that tone. And, um, I would I would say that like the most effective way to sort of counter that what I would like to see is like making workers aware of the surveillance and how it's actually like not beneficial for them to have cameras in the workplace in that way like that like they are there for the workers to be watched over by their managers um, and to watch for shoplifters um, that's sort of just like a, a philosophical thing um, Artistically, I'm not, I'm not exactly uh, sure yet. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah. Taking public space video. So like uh, filming public space? Filming cops? So you, I, so I know that there is laws to protect that. Basically, you have to be um, not interfering with police process. Now, that is totally arbitrary to the police, and a lot of people who have been harassed by the police for filming them are, fall into that jur jurisdiction, I know. They're like, you are too close even though you're like two blocks away, um, because it's pretty much up to the, the p police's discretion. Um, I know that like people with privilege, like white privilege or male privilege, can get away with filming the cops better than people without so much privilege and like I strongly suggest that if you see you know New York I've I've been here you know I'm from California I've been here for a week and I've already seen somebody stop and frisk I'm just like you know I never saw it before in my life and like it's not something that happens in Oakland at least or in San Francisco and it's just like it's such an interesting thing it's like you know I encourage those of, with privilege to film the cops you know and to get that footage and most of the time that will make the cops walk away without doing anything to the person because they're just trying to harass people. Yeah, thank you. Is that it? Yeah, so bother me on Twitter or talk to me in person, whatever. Thank you. And I don't know how many people are new here, but uh, I'm Ted, the video guy. And just a reminder, we did film this presentation, and they'll be available Jeez. starting tomorrow uh, out on the table. So thank you. look for them on the internet. <laughs>